on this week's episode and oh man I loved, loved, loved this conversation. I'm joined by Marta Pereira de Costa, an incredibly talented fado guitarist. And Marta is also one of the only professional female fado guitarists in Portugal. I'm a realtor and I have clients from all over the world and all of them speak about fado as this mysterious thing. And today we try to peel back some of the mystery that surrounds fado. Marta shares why she loves this music so much, the emotion behind the music, what makes the Fado guitar so unique and so beautiful in the way that it looks and the way that it sounds. And just for you, the Portugal, the Simple Life listeners, Marta plays her own original piece on her very own beautiful Fado guitar. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch this episode and to see some of the photos that we posted. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And now, over to my conversation with Marta. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life. And it's a real honor to be joined here by Marta Pereira da Costa. Marta, thank you so much for being on the podcast and welcome. Thank you, Dylan, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be chatting with you. You're in Lisbon at the moment. It's raining a lot in our in our country. Not not normal, uh, but it's all came all at the same time. But we need it badly, so we just need to enjoy it and to be thankful for all this rain. It's not nice, but uh, the the earth needs so. Exactly, and, and for creative people, it's it's quite inspiring to have some some different yeah. types of weather. So it's good. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Marta, why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about you? Well, my name is Marta. Uh, I was born in Lisbon. I'm 40 years old. Um, I used to, to play the piano when I was four. I always wanted to be a musician since I was born, I believe. Um, I, I'm very sportive. I love sports. Um, I discovered the Portuguese guitar only when I was 18 and because my father is very passionate about fado music and he wanted me to, to learn, just learn the guitar. And I just started and I fell in love with this instrument. It was like a huge passion. I wanted to learn everything about fado, everything about fado houses, fado singers. And it was like I was emerging in a new world that I never um I never stopped. So um, I, I studied civil engineer. Uh, oh, I, wow. worked, <laughs> I worked eight years. Well, the five years of the, the, the course, I, I said all the five years that I would give up and just be a musician. But, well, I couldn't do that. I, I really wanted, but I didn't have the, the strength. And, of course, my parents wanted me to, to finish the the in college and I did and then I had an invitation to work and well I just went and was waiting for the the best moment to to risk and to 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 go after my dream and I was married to a father singer um okay uh he invited me to record um a fado album his second fado album and that was very uh, challenging for me and i think it was the the most important moment that made me um made me change my life because uh we did something special that album um was awarded by the best album of um, fado at the, that year by fundação wow. Mali rodrigues and i thought if i if I had time to dedicate myself to music again, uh, we could do something special because traditionally only men used to play the Portuguese guitar and I wanted so badly to, to do it and being a woman. And well, it took me a year to quit civil engineer and I had already two, two babies, a boy and a girl, two years old, twins. So it was a crazy time. Okay. <laughs> and... Um, well, I think I, I made the, the best decision of my life and my life has been, well, the best crazy thing I could imagine. Um, of course, it's not easy, no. but the rewards is is amazing. So, amazing. Well, I, I think I can speak for everybody that's heard you play the guitar that 
thank you for for making that decision because it's a it's a beautiful thing but we're going to get on to fadu and that journey and the guitar there's so much that we can talk about but let's talk up a little bit um first um Marta, about your where you're from um you mentioned off before we started recording that you're from lisbon but you live a lot in porto um so which would you consider your your hometown well, that's easy, Lisbon, of course. And okay. every time, every time I travel, I love so much to come back and to come back home, to come back to Lisbon. Uh, I love going to Porto. Uh, I always want to go faster and faster to get to, to get sooner, to arrive sooner. Uh, but uh, well, I still feel Lisbon. I was born here. I was raised here. Uh, I studied here, so this is still my my city. Um, the red team or the green team? Red team, Benfica, always. <laughs> you know that I had, you know that I had Nuno Gomes on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, cool. yeah. If I'd known, if I'd known that uh, you were such a big Benfica fan, I would have told you about that right at the beginning. But he was a great, <laughs> he was a great guest. It was an interesting yeah. discussion because I'm sporting, um. And I had Nuno Gomes, she's like one of the Benfica icons on the podcast. So it was uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But now I've seen photos of you in the other stadium in the north. Uh, how do you feel yes. about It was the first time I went to Dragão. And my husband is a football club do Porto supporter. So I asked him if um, he could take me to the game. It would be fun. Porto Benfica, we both... One of each would be happy and the other one, of course, would be happy for the other. But he didn't want to go and he didn't tell me. So he was avoiding buying the tickets or getting invitations, <laughs> just avoiding, avoiding. And two days before I said, where are the tickets? I really want to go. We are arriving from Ireland that, that afternoon. So we have time. We can go. I don't want to miss this game. And he said, I don't want to go. Uh, it will be dangerous. I don't want to go. And so I, I got the tickets. I really wanted to go. I got the tickets and we were in the Benfica part. So he was so embarrassed and uncomfortable. And he was, he would say still, wouldn't say anything. And I was, well, I was enjoying it. And when Benfica scored, uh, there were some Portuguese on, well, a few rows uh, above, above, no, under. In front? Oh, in front, yeah. And I was like, Vika! <laughs> it was really, really fun. <laughs> what was the result in that game? One nil for Vika. See, he, he, should have, he should have listened to you. Maybe the result would have been different. Yes, who knows? You, know, you never know. You never know. And that's real love that you're married to a guy from Porto, a Porto supporter. I used that's to be real... married to a guy from Sporting, so I... <laughs> so you've really, yeah, you, you're a romantic. <laughs> love knows no, no boundaries. <laughs> Marta, I mean, just about the two cities, because they are, for, 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 I suppose for people listening, there's not a big difference between the two cities in terms of how it feels. But for us that have been living in Portugal, or for Portuguese people, there, there, there is a different feeling to both cities. Um, what would you describe the differences between Lisbon and Porto for you? Well, I think, uh, I believe Lisbon is bigger. And um, I, when I go to Porto, I still, in a good way, feel like, like Porto is a village because we know everyone. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows what everyone is doing. So uh, it's like a big newspaper and a, a big uh, village. In Lisbon, um, I feel a bit stressful when I'm here. Uh, the mm -hmm. life, the traffic. You, of course, you have traffic in, in Porto, but I, I feel in, because when I'm here, I'm working when I'm in Porto. Well, I'm I'm accompanying my husband, so I'm in a more relaxed way. I enjoy a lot of Porto being near the the Foz. Um, I I'm very connected to the the water, to the sea, to the river. So it, it's I I always go to go near Tejo, of course. But when I'm in the the Foz, it's so beautiful, so beautiful that that uh, landscape. Yeah. And as a as a civil engineer, I'm sure that you can appreciate the bridges in uh, yes. in Porto. Yes, I, I used Amazing. actually that was my 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 specialty bridges when I really? when I finished. Yeah, but now I say I'm I'm not engineer anymore. I forgot everything. It's all in a 
Comeces gaveta, um, the drawers, that? yeah, the drawer. stored away yeah, in the I'm drawer, yeah. One hundred percent musician. <laughs> well, I will actually want to do an episode at some stage about bridges in Portugal because we have some all over the country, some amazing bridges. So maybe you can help me connect me to the right people to to speak to about that. But let's talk about um, music. Um, your 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 love. Um, you mentioned that you grew up in a musical environment and, and you got immersed in Fado. Tell us a little bit about that journey and what what grabbed you in this world of Fado as a, as a young girl? Uh, well, it, uh, let's go a bit uh, earlier. Um, I was... My, my kindergarten teacher told my parents that I was very addicted to musical instruments, to everything about music. And she advised them to put me in music, music lessons okay. when I was four. And I started playing the piano at that time. I played the classical guitar. I wanted to play the cello. Well, I wanted to play all the instruments with my parents. Said, no, no, no. Let's focus on one. And later when I was introduced to Fado music, um, at the beginning, I can confess that I was not into it. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, it was more for old people. Uh, not At the time, no young people would go to father houses. So I would go, but um, I wouldn't pay much attention. Uh, when I discovered the Portuguese, inst- the Portuguese guitar, that made a click. Uh, I felt connected with the instrument, and then I felt connected with father. It was first the instrument. Uh, and to to learn about uh, all the the guitar players, uh, the instrumental pieces that were composed long, long time ago. Uh, And my father was so proud and so happy. He would go with me to all the father houses. We'd go the two, just the two, um, to Barqual, to to Alfama, everywhere he would go with me. And it was very fun. It was lots of fun. And I started meeting the, the father singers, uh, I started going earlier to to practice there and to know what fados would they sing after. So I would ask everyone, what are you going to sing tonight? And I would go to YouTube and to listen to the fados or ask to other guitar players, how could I play? And it was everyday lessons. Uh, it was uh, the best school. Um, and uh, well, but it was for fun. It was always for fun. I, I, I was not uh, thinking about doing it professionally. I just wanted to learn, to learn the most I could. And suddenly it uh, got seriously serious. Um, when I get, when I was married to Rodrigo Costa Felix and so we we just designed a project where the two of us could, could be together playing. Uh, he's singing and me playing, which is... Uh, the opposite of what is common normally is a, a yeah. woman that sings fado and the man play the instruments so we were doing the, the other way around and it was it was very interesting and he believed in me he helped me a lot I was well you need to play several years to to be a medium guitar player or so I was not at the time I, I can I can admit that I was not um I used to play with other guitar players by them, their side. So it was not very demanding. But when you're by yourself, you can see that you need to learn much more to, to do a better job. So, um, well, recording in studio is more, con- more controlled. So uh, I could practice. I could do it over and over again until I was satisfied. But when we went on, we went on the road and we were touring, well, I was scared and I was feeling I was not prepared. I had to learn like 10 years in one week. So I practiced a lot. I got lots of injuries, but it was, well, it was so, so special. It was, um, I learned a lot. It was very, very important. And well, with time, I, I went to, I went to study again. I went to the uh, university, it's called Supra de Musica. Superior School of Music uh, to study again, to get more uh, tools, to to learn about different things, jazz, uh, ear training, so I could be a better musician with time. Um, And that's what I do every day. I try to be better. Amazing. Fado is is, um, one of Portugal's most iconic things that Portugal is known for. It's it's a symbol of, of Portuguese culture and it's one of our best exports along with wine and cork and a lot of other things. But 
Um, for someone that doesn't know and has never heard it, what how would you describe Fadu to to someone that has no idea? Well, uh, what is more, what people say, it's about uh, so that and it's about uh, sadness. I don't agree with that. I agree mm. that Fado music, it's much more than that. It's about feelings of the Portuguese. It's about the day life of the Portuguese. And that involves, of course, so that, the historical so that. It involves uh, all the backgrounds we have, all the influences we have from the sailors. Um, it's our heritage. That's the way, and the way we express it, um, it's uh, it's unique. It's ours. So of course you can learn fado. You can, uh, but you must you must have it like in the DNA. It's, it's about how I, I I feel. It's very personal. It's very from the inside. You need to to expose yourself to expose the deepest feelings you have. Um, it can be happy, it can be sad, it's all, it's complete. Yeah, um, we've had uh, Maria Amelia on the podcast, uh, who I know you you know her. Um, I love and, her. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah and, and she described that when you come to Fido, you have to come with an open heart. Uh, yeah. And it's it's like that, to to connect with the feelings and the, the spirit of the music. That's true. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. Was your were your parents worried um about you becoming a female guitarist? Was that something that they were concerned about because it was so different to what was normal? Uh, yeah, at the time, well, there was a time that my father forbidden me to go to the father houses because uh, it I was going too much. I was going every day and I was studying and he said, Well, we need to 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 take it easy. My mother was very worried. My mother didn't like, she would prefer me to play the piano at home. And she said, well, this is for men. This is not for women. It's dangerous. You go by yourself. Because when I was older, I would take a Uber or a taxi and I would go to the father houses. Even when I was working at the father house, there was a time I was working every night on different father houses. And she said, well, that's too tough for you. That's not the life I imagined. <laughs> I said, well, I'm, I like going. Sometimes I was scared. That's that's true. Going by myself uh, late nights to the car. I was uh, sometimes I was scared, but uh, well, I enjoyed so much being with the other father singers, going to from one house, one father house to another. Um, the the environment is really really special. I was totally connected to to it. I miss because nowadays I don't go that much to father houses. Um, and uh, I like to return, uh, but I miss those times that were tough, but also really, really good. Yeah, uh, Jonas, um, who you also know, he's he's been on the uh, Jonas, the Fado singer Jonas. Uh, yeah, I I know him badly. Yeah, yeah but I, I yeah, know. Yeah, I know he he's also been on the podcast, and and he he spoke about um how he's you know now that he's kind of playing bigger concerts that he, he's missing the photo houses and that experience of that intimacy and that connection. It sounds like it's just like a family, a, a real community and a family uh, that, that everyone's connected and looks after each other. Yes, you can say that. Well, it has good and bad things. As I can, I can confess at the beginning, I had nice friends, but I also felt, um, well, some prejudice about being a woman and about sure. playing. So you can you can have both feelings. Of course, I have very good friends, guitar players, father singers, and I really enjoy hanging out with them and go and listen to them. Um, but at the same time, I, I I feel that I had to fight a bit to 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 gain my space and uh, to to be to be not recognized but uh, respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like it's changed now from what it was before? Uh, it's a, that that side. I think, that... I think both situations happen. I still have people that think I shouldn't play because I'm a woman or I don't play good enough, and uh, there are lots of people that uh, say, "Well, congratulations! You're doing very what you're doing is very special. Taking, giving a voice to the Portuguese guitar, traveling a lot in name of Portugal. So we're proud." We can never um, make everyone happy. So no. That's 
No, it's I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. So anyone that has a problem, just you can tell them to come speak to me. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be your bodyguard. I'll be your unofficial bodyguard. Okay. Okay. Deal. <laughs> yeah. Deal. Marta, um, you mentioned the click was the the Portuguese guitar. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm biased, but it's the most beautiful guitar in the world. Uh, it just looks beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Um, I'm, I play guitar, I, 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 so I know what you mean by taking a long time to become mediocre at at an <laughs> instrument. Because I've played for like twenty years, and I'm just mediocre. I'm not uh, and not that good. So I recognize your your calluses on your fingers when you when you you publish once the the the, the marks on the hands. But um, what was the what was the click for you? What what did what made what did you fall in love with about this instrument? Um, how why why why? Tell us why it, why it grabbed you. Well, the sounds, uh, mainly the sounds, the, the, well, it's such a magical sound that I was really involved with it. But then I felt the Portuguese guitar would be like my, sometimes I write it's a second skin, but it's more than a second skin. It's like a turtle. It's it's part of me. And I, I hold her and I, uh, I feel we're very connected with my guitar. When I play other Portuguese guitars, it's not the same. But my Portuguese guitar, the um, my my favorite one, I feel it's part of me. And uh, um, and I believe each instrument is made um, by the time we play. So my Portuguese guitar, if it was played by a different person, it would have a different sound. So uh, I think I built the sound in my Portuguese guitar. And um, what I imagine in my head uh, that is the, the, the beautiful sound of these instruments and then I, f- I, I can see and I can feel it coming out the instrument is really special. Sometimes when I play, uh, well, mainly my compositions because they came from me, I really get um, so emotional it's like a um, catars. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, cathartic, cathartic, cathartic. Yeah, it's like it's a th- like a therapy. Yes, yes, it's magical, and uh, I f- I feel wow, I'm so lucky to be doing this because I love so much doing this, um, and that's yeah. experience that feeling. It's it's physical. It's it's also physical, not only emotional. Have you have you got have you got her there with you? Yeah. Can you show us? Well, this is my favorite one. Actually, how many do you have? How many guitars do you have? Uh, I have two of my own, and one is borrowed from Mario Pacheco. I had oh. a third one, mine, but uh, well, it is going to be substituted. I need to have two, um, but I only play with this. I don't know. There are many guitar players that have ten guitars, and I, I tell them you only play with your favorite, right? I can only play with this. Of course, if something happens to this, it has to go to reconstruction because it was broken already. Uh, of course, I, I need to have a, another spare guitar. But um, yeah, I wanted to tell you something. When I bought this guitar, I was not mm. very happy because it was hard for me to play. It was not built uh, for me. And um, I, I left it, well, for several months. I was just trying to play. No, not I'm not comfortable and leave it aside. And it spent time. I spent time um, with the other one. The other one was a favorite at the time. Um, and there was a guy that wanted to to try the guitar and said, "Well, it's a very good instrument. You shouldn't sell it. You should um, you should give it a second try." And, uh, and so I I went to Oscar Cardoz, which is the luthier that makes these beautiful guitars, and said, I want to play in the in this guitar, but it's not prepared for me. As you can see, the strings are too high. It's difficult to play. Here, the strings need to go, um, of course, lower near the, the arm because uh, it's easier to, to press the, the strings. Um, the strings were... I, I made all my... my what I thought I needed to have a good guitar. And suddenly I never, but never uh, let this guitar go. And the the sound, 
a few years later, that friend of mine who plays the Portuguese guitar that said, well, keep the guitar, don't sell it. He said, the guitar is amazing now. It's, it's, it's developed and the sound is very, very good. So you were very wise not to sell the guitar. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the guitar developed. Uh, I love the sound of this guitar. It's all, all well, with marks, war marks. It was broken in Canada because of the, the cold. Uh, but it's my favorite one. Um, I see you've got something on your on your finger there. Uh, is that an injury? No, we need to play with these two picks, okay. finger picks. Ah, this okay. is the, the one made by the turtle turtle skin. This one is very light, as you can see. You can bend it. Uh, it makes it makes it helps me to to play faster. Uh, I have some issues with the, with the, the finger picks. I, I think all the guitar players have it's handmade. It's made for each finger. Each mm -hmm. one choose the, the angle, uh, the material, the the length, the the shape. So we are always discovering the secrets for six for success. If you have a good nail, you can play well. If you have a bad nail, you you always can blame on the nail. <laughs> How many how many manicures do you have to get uh, each each month? Well, it's one three times a week. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's that's. No, that's no, no. I didn't say right. I didn't say right. Uh, three, three weeks. I go oh, one, one every week. one every three yeah. weeks. One every. I three thought weeks. I thought you went three times no, a week. That's no, uh. No. <laughs> okay, no, that, that would be expensive. That would be expensive. Can you can you play us a little bit? Yeah. Please. So I can play a little bit of um, my first composition. Wow. Stop. I need to 
English. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. That's, I've got a uh, happy hunch everywhere. Goosebumps everywhere. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much. How many places have you? Pl- you okay, hold on, just to because um, we spoke about how the, some of the challenges. You're the only professional female fighter uh-huh. guitarist. I can't say that anymore. That I'm the only one. Okay, uh, but you're one of the few. Are, well, you were. Yes. Wow. I believe at the beginning there was there was um, uh, Luisa Mar. She was born. She was born. She was married to Carlos Paredes, the biggest name of the Portuguese guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Fado, yes, I was the only one that was playing, that was performing. Mm. And now, nowadays there are more women learning. Uh, there was um, last year a woman with 23 years old, she, Mariana Martins, she finished uh, a degree in Portuguese guitar. She studied the Portuguese guitar. Uh, so she gives lessons. She's starting to give concerts. And there are other women that are learning the Portuguese guitar. So it's going Good. to change. Okay. You, the women should. They've got better finger dexterity, and uh, it's a. Uh, it, it should. It's a match made in heaven. You know, it's got to work. We can do everything. We can exactly. Do it. We focus on that. We can do any, anything. Amazing. Um, where all have you performed? You've you've performed in a lot of places. I battled. I can't keep track of your Instagram where you travel, <laughs> where you go. But where 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 all have you performed um, around the world, uh, Marta? Where well. Uh, United States lots of times I, I usually go there on tour I was doing before pandemics and now I recovered and re- returned already uh, I went to Hawaii I think that's the, the farthest place I've ever been playing Hawaii. to where? Hawaii, Hawaii. oh wow yeah. okay um, well, 10 Spain, hours Brazil. 10 hours difference uh, 10 hours time difference yeah. 10 hours well, it was, yeah 11 at the time it was wow. 11 hours so I love to go to Brazil, uh, Spain, Italy. I had a beautiful concert there. I only played there once. Uh, Israel, Africa, Africa, Senegal. Uh, I played in Tunisia. I played uh, Canada. My debut was in Canada. Uh, Ireland. I don't know. I need to check my agenda. In, in Ireland, well, in Ireland, you played for for the president. Um, yes. of Ireland, and Marcelo was there as well, right? Yes, yes. It yeah. was um, a cocktail in, um, offered by our president. He was there on a state oh. visit, and he was invited for several occasions. But on that day, it was the, the Portuguese president that was inviting uh, the Irish president. It was very special, very honored. Amazing. How, I mean, how does it feel to to take this instrument and this music that's that's so close to your heart? How does it feel to to take this in so many places to so many places in the world? Um, well, I feel very honored every time I go abroad in the name of Portugal because I feel I, I am in a mission uh, taking the Portuguese guitar, talking about Portugal, about our cult, uh, culture. And uh, I want to, I would love to, to continue this, this work and with the, the main object to bring the Portuguese guitar, the notoriety. I think it can have like other national instruments in other, play, other um, countries, like the bandoneon in tango, like the flamenco guitar, um, the bandolin. So they are, each country has its own um, traditional instruments and some of them are very famous. Some of them we don't know, even we don't even know. So I want the Portuguese guitar to be famous all over the world and as a, our national instruments. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, in Portugal, uh, you've played in some really uh, beautiful places. You mentioned before we started recording that you played in the castle in, in Estoril. Uh, I saw a video of you playing in a chapel the other day. Um, what's for you was the most special, maybe it's a difficult question, but some of the most special places you've played here in Portugal in your home? Uh, well, I played in such beautiful castles that I didn't even know they existed or they would be that special. Um and also nice theatres, cosy theatres, big theatres. Um, of course, the not uh, talking about 
beauty because last night it was amazing it, it was a castle in in front of the, the beach in front of the sea uh with a beautiful sunset it was very very inspiring very magical um and people it was a very small dinner very special private dinner um but sometimes what i wanted to say is sometimes people can make the beauty beauty of the the space um my my most uh, emotional concert it was my my debut in in lisbon well not debut in lisbon it was when i released my album and i was um, playing in tivoli which is a very iconic uh, venue in lisbon and um, i thought it would be too soon to go there but uh, well i had a nice offer and i wanted to to present my album there it would be very important with uh, special guests and the audience was surrounding the 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 stage i i went there um, lots of hours before i went to the last row i went to every place to see how people would see me and I felt so connected and so involved by all the, the audience. It was sold out. It was full. It was incredible. So that is, for me, the most unforgettable um, night I, I performed. That is unforgettable. It sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Um, you mentioned earlier in our conversation that um, you you just feel good coming back home when you travel and stuff. Tell us a bit about that experience when you've been on the road, been traveling, flying, and what does it feel like coming back home? And why Why is that so special? Uh, well, when, when you go before, when you go and we leave, we are excited to what, with what we're doing. Um, the first time I toured, I had several concerts, I was scared and I went by myself in the first place. My band would go after a week or some days after because I would go to do interviews, to to have meetings with promoters. And um, well, I was feeling the pressure of be, doing a big, big tour. And uh, uh, I cried, I was emotional, but I wanted to do that very much. But I was a bit scared. When when you have the the feeling that you you what you did was well done, uh, when you're proud of the the places you've been and the the feedback you had, you just want to go back home very very fast, the fastest you can, and to hug your kids. Uh, I miss them terribly. That's the worst part. And they don't miss me. I, I believe. <laughs> no, of course, they, of course they do. Just a bit, but they're fine. They are entertained. They, they, and that's the best. I don't want them to suffer. Uh, but I suffer a lot. I, I really, it's, it's the hardest part is to be apart uh, from them uh, for a long period of time. Well, the, the biggest period of time was uh, three weeks, and that's a lot. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, but I love uh, landing on Lisbon. Uh, it's beautiful to to arrive uh, Lisbon, yeah. um, and to be home to to have my bed. To, to I always miss a soup, Portuguese soup and, and uh, fish, because when we were traveling, we all well. I try to eat well, but sometimes it's impossible. I ti I'm tired. I just want to eat a burger or something that uh, gives me comf comf comfort food. Uh, so. I miss the Portuguese food a lot, especially yeah. the soup, which is healthy, the, the vegetables, etc. Um, and I love, it's so good because I love traveling. I love going everywhere. I'm always with my, my luggage down. It's not to, not to, in Packed the place. It's always, yeah. Yes, it's always with me because I'm always going on going. Um, and I love that, that way of living. But I love to come back home and to come back to my place. My friends, I miss them a lot. When I arrive, I always call everyone and try to book dinners because I miss everyone terribly. And when I'm going abroad, I miss all the, the fun, all the, the dinners they are booking and I'm not present. So when I'm here, I need to recover time to meet them. Yeah, the food is, a, is an issue. I, I, I recently went to Belgium and to the Netherlands and... You've got to look so hard to find good food that's healthy and not 
it's crazy expensive. And then you come back to Portugal and it's right there at your Tashka or at the cafe or in the local restaurant. Yeah. It's uh, Easy. It's good. Well cooked. Yeah. With love. Yeah. With a smile. Um, what makes you proud of your, your country? What makes you proud of Portugal? Well, uh, that's a difficult question because um, I'm proud of being born here. I'm proud of uh, living in this beautiful country with welcoming people. Um, we have a, we have a place where all the kids can go downstairs and play with each other. Uh, we respect human rights. Of course, we are not a perfect country. We have mm. all our issues, issues yep. but uh, we are. We have solidarity. We are. Uh, we in the neighborhood. We get along and we help each other. When there's someone that needs, we are there. Um, we like to have fun. We like to re welcome um, people welcome friends from other another countries we like to show our culture to show our country our monuments we're proud of our history that's it yeah those are good things those are good things marta um marta what's what's one thing um that you want people to remember and take away from our conversation one thing anything you want that's the difficult question <laughs> <laughs> uh I think the the most important is the proud of being Portuguese. Of the the Portuguese guitar is a way of expressing that I found and I found a really special connection. But it uh, it's like a mirror of uh, the people who we are as Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I am again. I don't mind getting into trouble for this. Uh, and I'm biased, I know, but it's a much nicer guitar than the flamenco guitar. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Marta, um, how can we follow you online? How can people be in touch with, with what you're doing, where you're playing? Uh, how can we follow you on social media? Uh, well, the best like way is to follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm more active, posting pictures, videos, etc. There's a website, www.martapereiradacosta.com. Um, there are some videos there and the agenda is there, but sometimes it's not up to date. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, well, on Facebook also, but Instagram is the, the best. Instagram is Also, if you Google, I don't know if you know this, but if you Google the Portuguese guitar lady, yeah. it, appears, it appears you. I'm going to check. So you are the, you are the <laughs> Portuguese guitar <No>. lady. <laughs> the Portuguese guitar lady. Um. Marta, uh, I've loved this conversation and we could talk forever and uh, and I want to come and hear yeah. you play a, a show one day. Um, but uh, a, a question that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life, why? Well, I think I've answered that before, a simple life, because we're simple. Uh, we are easygoing. Uh, we... We feel safe in our country. We're happy with the weather. We have sunny weather, not today. Um, but uh, we have a beautiful light, uh, beautiful landscape, beautiful food, and that makes us happy. Food and wine, of course. And fado. And fado, of course. <laughs> Thank you, I love beautiful. that. Marta, I love this conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you. It's and I'm going to let... Yeah, I'm going to let you call it. It's a wrap. Thank you. That's it. So thank you once again to Marta and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, um abraço. Welcome to the simple life.